Welcome, guys, to Jimmy Comics, and welcome to our Novel Nook segment. Today, we're going to be covering Halo Ghosts of Onyx by Eric Nyland, the final book. In Nyland Trilogy. Um, yep. So, this one did not come as a definitive edition, unfortunately. They didn't add anything to it, but um, the whole thing is like 380 pages, I think. So, Fairly quick read compared to the it's others. It's 370, 380 pages. That's what I said. Uh, three, you kind of cut out. Three, I, okay. You kind of cut out, sorry. Um, so, why, how many times have you read this? Not as much as First Strike or Fall of Reach because I've had those first, but I've read this one four or five. Okay, and I've read this one time. <laughs> the one time. Um, but I enjoyed it quite a bit. It's about a Spartan that we've never seen before named Kurt. Um, and basically, without giving too much away, it's about him. And he like goes literally missing in action. I know they always report dead Spartans as missing in action, but he actually was missing. Um, and the what was his name, Colonel? Like Amber, no. Colonel Ackerson. Ackerson. So Ackerson takes him and he says, Hey, we want you to head the Spartan 3 program. So Kurt and Chief and all those guys are Spartan 2s. They are about to create another wave of Spartans. And um, Kurt is going to, they like give him an actual rank of lieutenant. They also give him an actual uh, last name. Last name of Ambrose. Um, and so he is the head of that. They, they bring in candidates that like aren't, they wouldn't have cut it as Spartan twos. Um, but they're kind of expanding the the pool. Yeah. The Spartan two program had a very minute, uh, uh, selection for candidates. They had to have, uh, very high genes. They had to basically be the best of the best children, but the Spartan three program, as it develops, the, pool gets a lot larger and basically they can take any uh, kid they want really and they have a good chance of surviving augmentation because that's how yeah. uh, good the technology has gotten. Yeah. So that before the pool was so small because they would literally just die and a lot of them did anyway. Yeah. Um, but uh, so they're creating a new wave of Spartans because they need more. Um, the whole program the basis of it is that like, Hey, these are like the, this is the suicide squad. Yeah. The uh, Colonel Ackerson calls it the production run. He says the Spartan twos were the expensive prototype. So they took that and decided to make more of them that were cheaper and could uh, be used better is what he was going for. Yeah. And basically they would put him in missions where like they would not really have an exfil plan. Um, well, they did have an exfil plan, but they would not survive long enough to get there, pretty much. Well, the the point is, like, they would they would not tell humanity about them. They officially no. did not exist. So if they didn't make it back, they, there's no penalty, really, for that on his part. Um, yeah. The, the thing here is they are trading lives for time. Because at this point of the war, things are not going well for humanity. The Covenant are continuously pushing in, and really only the Spartan twos have really successful engagements with the Covenant on uh, uh, such a grand scale. So Mm -hmm. the Spartan threes are just to buy time. So they send them on offensive engagements to destroy Covenant shipyards, refineries, factories, on the edge of human space in order to slow down their advance. And I uh, let humanity kind of pick up uh, pick up from its losses in order to be able to stand against them conventional. Right. So um, I would give this book a ten because I really enjoyed it. Um, also a ten for me. I uh, I like how Nyland always gives you like some covenant point of view. I love those little like half chapters, really, of just that stuff. I think it's yeah, this cool. this one uh, we actually had a coven protagonist we followed. It was shipmaster and later fleetmaster Voro was yep. his name. 
And we see him uh, fighting in the Great Schism, which is the Covenant Civil War that happens in Halo 2. So right. we see him fighting the Brutes and the lead meeting up with the other elites at a planet called Joyous Exaltation. And we're going to get into that. Yeah. So um, I guess full spoilers ahead. Yeah. We are a go on the spoilers. You have been warned. So the book opens with Operation Torpedo, Beta Company's victory at Pegasi Delta. And basically, we knew nothing at this point of who these people are. We just knew they were Spartans. We didn't know anything about the Spartan 3 program when this book was released. But it's yeah. basically a fire team of Spartans uh, alongside 300 others are all assaults in this Covenant refinery. And they are just tearing through the Covenant. They're going against jackals and big phalanxes with their shields. They're getting strafed by uh, seraphs. And uh, then these huge Covenant battleships show up uh, right above and just start glassing the whole area. And our fire team we're following gets inside the refinery and is able to blow it up, like set off a huge chain reaction. But only two of them live. And uh, these, these two characters show up later on. Their names are Tom and Lucy. And Lucy has this uh, form of PTSD where uh, she doesn't talk anymore after this, after losing all 300 of her comrades. So that was the opener to this book. Yeah. It's a really tragic opening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but like that is that is basically what the whole Spartan 3 program is built for. Mm -hmm. That type of I, stuff. Uh, of the title of this entry, the uh, uh, Beta Company's victory at Pegasi Delta. They call yeah. it a victory. Yeah. Well, mission accomplished, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and then section one is Lieutenant Ambrose. And uh, that's starting with chapter one. And this is actually the only part of the book where we're in the point of view of uh, Master Chief, who has been the main focus of... Uh, Nyland's other two books in his trilogy. Uh, mm -hmm. He uh, doesn't do much with him in this book and kind of shifts the focus onto Kurt 051. Right. I did so, like I did like this this whole part of the story where it's just an old blue team mission. Yeah. Action. It's really cool. Um, yeah. So they they get this the word that rebels in this sector have some nukes. And the UNSC want those nukes. So they send Blue Team in. And uh, Kurt, Kurt has this sort of sixth sense. So he can kind of, he's very perceptive. So he can tell when stuff's about to go wrong. And uh, he, gets, he gets one of these funny feelings. And uh, Master Chief and Blue Team go to secure the nukes. And uh, the Rebels use an old technology called an anti-grab plate to make their suits think that they were in this... Uh, uh, very high G environment, so their armor automatically started cranking up the pressure inside their suits in order to save their lives, but that rendered them unconscious. And when they did that, they put these neural locks on that kept them from moving and basically locked, uh, captured all the Spartans, outsmarted these Spartans yeah. who have never been outsmarted before like that. So. They are all like, Master Chief's just like, holy crap, what are we going to do? I can't move. And then he realizes that the uh, blue team has been running ops uh, down a man uh, recently. So they only know the four of blue team. So they don't know Kurt is still out there. Mm -hmm. And he starts, he, show, he drives a warthog into this area and starts throwing anti-personnel mines like they're grenades. And just uh, gets through all of them. And he rescues everyone. They get the nukes. They go off to the LZ. Uh, I think Linda snipes this drone from like a couple kilometers away because she's deadliest sniper in fiction. <laughs> yeah. And they get onto the Pelican and are able to uh, get out of there. Uh, mission accomplished. The next part, though, is uh, chapter two is on the UNSC point of no return which is the field operations uh, headquarters for the Office of Naval Intelligence. It's basically a stealth ship, bigger than any prowler, and inside of it is a room that's pretty much a Faraday, Faraday cage. No signal can get in or out. And we see a shadowy meeting of Colonel Axon and uh, Admiral Parangoski and two others who are high up in Oni. 
and they that's when uh, Ackerson comes forth with his Spartan three program, and he asks Admiral Parangoski after their talk about it that isn't uh, sacrificing these lives worth it. And she goes, damn us all to hell. Yes, it's worth it. You have the green light. <laughs> yeah. Parangoski is one of the most interesting characters to me. Yeah. Isn't she like really, really old too? Yes, she is. She's old and she's the type who would have had scorpions as a pet as a little girl instead of uh, any puppy or cat. So not related to this book, but that those new books you got... The Halo books, are they, like, similar to that mission? Like, are they against Rebels and stuff? Some of them, yes. The Rebels okay. have uh, appeared a little bit in Silent Storm. Like, I saw a mission, and uh, th it's really cool because the woman who uh, was uh, Admiral Cole's second wife, you know, the one that was actually an insurrectionist yeah. captain, she's in it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it is cool. Admiral Cole's in it, she's in it. Uh, oh, some people from Troy Denning's other books are kind of in it. Like he did uh, originally, he did some books f uh, that were post-war, centered around a planet called Gal, and uh, Gal was kind of a independent human world. And he has uh, some insurrectionists who are from Gal in this book. It's really cool. I catch the reference, and I really liked it. Okay. Yeah. We we'll have to read those books. They're really good. Yeah. So yeah, they get the green light for this program, and then uh, Kurt and two other Spartan twos, I think uh, Kelly and jo Joshua. I don't. Yeah, know. Uh, Kelly and uh, Kelly and Fred. It's Kelly and Fred who he's with, and uh, they go to sh short out or scout out these shipyards that are supposed to be abandoned. And uh, it's been all uh, set up, basically. Kurtz moves in to investigate, and this slip space drive that was still sitting there at the docks goes all wonky and uh, messes up his thruster pack and basically sends him out into space. And the all recovery uh, missions fail. They don't find him. What actually happened is the UNSC point of no return was there, and they took him uh, because of this failure. So they kidnapped Kurt. And like we said earlier, Colonel Ackerson is there and gives him his last name, gives him his rank, and informs him about the Spartan 3 program and basically says, you're the leader of it. You're the head of uh, training. But we also got a familiar face, Senior Chief Petty Officer Franklin Mendez. <laughs> yeah, and he, cool. yeah, he, he was the original uh, trainer for the Spartan 2 program, so he knows Kurt very well. Yep. It, it was also weird for Kurt to be his superior. Like, <laughs> yeah, he had to adjust to that. That's like that's like being your dad's boss. <laughs> yeah, M Mendez was the father figure for all the Spartan twos. Like Halsey was the mother figure. Yeah. So yeah, it's that's a very apt comparison. So uh, then, like, the the training, like not the training, but like when they get the kids in. At the very beginning, it's yep. like it's so funny because they come in and um, Mendez is like, "All right," uh, <laughs> and Kurt <laughs> Kurt walks struts around in his Molnir, you know, yeah, his big power uh, armor. Um, then uh, like gives him a speech or whatever, and Mendez says, "All right, back on the planes and you know, whatever," <laughs> and uh, he says, "Are we really going to do this, sir?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kurt goes. We got to. <laughs> yeah. And so like, basically, they have two They're like they four years old. And yeah, they're about some, to do a the halo youngest. drop out of the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> out of a pelican. Yeah. They have too many candidates. See, the difference between the Spartan 3 program and Spartan 2 is in Spartan 2, they kidnapped the kids. But in Spartan 3, they're using war orphans and they basically yeah. signed up themselves. They're motivated to do this to avenge their parents. Yeah. And he but, and, says that too. He's like, mm -hmm. you know, the covenant of destroyed your pl planets and families and this is your chance to get back at them yep and their ages all, all of the spartan twos were basically the same age these the youngest are three i believe three or four and the oldest are six or seven yeah. so they have a wider selection like we said so yeah they have too many candidates they need to thin the herd so <laughs> anyone who doesn't jump at four kilometers up 
Yeah. It gets to go back to the orphanage, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, one kid it focuses on, and he um, he kind of chickens out, but the dude behind him just shoves him out anyway. Yeah. And when they when they land, they get into a full on fight, and uh, Kurt he almost and kills Mendes, him. Yeah, Kurt and Mendes <laughs> pull him off each other, and Mendes is like, "Sir, this dude was about to kill this kid." Oh yeah, <laughs> we can use that. Like they're like, "Oh, this, this is good." <laughs> he didn't actually say "dude," but. Dude, sir. <laughs> dude, sir. What's your name, Private? My name's Dude, sir. <laughs> private Dude. <laughs> was that was that not Tom? No, Tom was Beta Company. This is Alpha Company. Oh, got you. Okay, that's right. Yeah, these these people all die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yep. <laughs> Dang you, Nyland. Make us care about some kids and then kill them all. Yep. Worse than George R. R. Not really. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah, it, like, it reminded like, me a lot of the uh, the Fall of Reach stuff, like when yeah. John is in training and stuff as a kid. They do some of that stuff. One of my favorite things is though when it, it goes to the kid's path, he calls Mendez the old Navy man. Old Navy man. Yeah, he's just like the yeah. old Navy man stood up. <laughs> <laughs> and the, when they were told to jump, they're like, some confusion will be normal. <laughs> <laughs> now go. Uh -oh. Yeah. <laughs> so then we have a little section that's pretty much just a data file. Uh, narrow band points point transmission. And it's talking about the packages being deliber delivered. Candidates exhibit marked aggression, will out of bounds of the uh, Smith Kinsey ending, some psychology stuff. Mm. So, with chapter eight, Kurt and Mendez are back aboard the point of no return. You want to take over? They're back aboard. Yeah, this is chap chapter eight on page. Is this the where they say they're going to get more funding? Or yeah, basically they. Uh, it's five years after Alpha Company was formed, right. and I'm pretty sure this is right after Operation Prometheus, where they all died. Right, and they're just. They just want another batch of them, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and we see it actually focuses because they're looking at um, uh, footage from Operation Prometheus and it focuses on the uh, kids that we focused on when they jump. And we get to watch them die. Oh boy. Yep. And they were, they, this was a long operation. They were on this huge refinery factory planet and they were fighting for days on this before they all got killed. Mm -hmm. um. Chapter nine, after this, where, um, they get more f uh, funding, and Kurt feels really bad about it because, I mean, yeah, he well, this was his company. They all died. Um, he starts uh, training Beta Company, and uh, we go to the point of view of Tom, who we've already uh, seen the point of view from in the initial prologue on uh, uh, for Beta Company. Mm -hmm. And this is when they're in training. And the and drill engine. Um, well, go ahead. Yeah, the the drill instructors are now wearing the Spartan Three's own equipment, the semi-powered infiltration armor, and they're basically hunting them down. Mm -hmm. Um, then it kind of skips to Gamma Company, and uh, like they're about to graduate, like they get their injections and stuff. Yeah, and before that, though, we t it shows how uh, Kurt had uh, 
did some illegal modifications to the new augmentations for Gamma Company, where it would basically made them immune to pain and able to walk off most wounds and keep alive uh, based on like this advanced adrenaline. But it made them super aggressive. He liked, without, uh, I think they affected the frontal lobe and made them like more aggressive. Yeah. Of. Because, like, later on in the book, there's a Spartan that's just like, oh, I kind of got nicked, sir. And yeah, and he's like his old. Head. Yeah, he's like covered in needles from a covenant needler. His ribs are literally showing. Yeah. So, the, the logic behind this was he wanted to uh, give them an edge, a way to survive. Right. Because he knew he was sending them on suicide missions. But uh, um, Gamma graduates, and Ash is kind of like the chief of that. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, the Gamma company, most of them have moved off of Onyx, which is the planet where they train. We have failed to mention that. But, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, a bit. But uh, the top teams of Gamma company are all competing for top honors. Saber, Katana, and something else. Yeah, they have cool names. I really they like do. how the other names yeah. are all after bladed weapons. It's really cool. Um, Ash is the head of Team Saber. Yes. Um, and so, like, they that team is going to be, like, the, the main team. They're going to team up with Blue Team. Yes. Toward the end. They're basically the Blue Team of Gamma Company. Pretty much. And you, it's uh, Ash, Holly, Olivia, and... It's another dude. Uh, Dante. Yeah, Dante is his name. Yeah. Um. So then they're they're about to do some training exercise. I don't remember what they called it, but it was like to kind of graduate them. Um. And there's this place on Onyx called Zone Sixty Seven. That's like the Area Fifty One, pretty much of Onyx. Um. And they've. They're like, oh, yeah, there's some Oni people digging or whatever. Yep. Uh, some ruins or some crap. They don't know what's going on. Um, yeah, but basically, Master Chief just blew up uh, the first that humanity had uh, come right. into contact with. And these ruins in Zone 67 are Forerunner in order. And they're waking up because, holy crap, the Halo Network. We just lost a seventh of it. Holy crap, we got to do something about that. So, yeah. they, all these Sentinels and Sentinel Runner War Robots, uh, th but these aren't regular Sentinels that we've seen in the games. These are Onyx class Sentinels, and they can join together to become even more powerful. Mm -hmm. So, they go in and they just immediately start tearing through all UNSC forces on the planet. They take out all the drill instructors. They take out a ship in orbit. Uh, the, they lose contact with the other Spartan 3 teams during this uh, graduation. They kind uh, of remind top me honors. of the unknown on Pokemon. Yeah, a bit. Just <laughs> that bit. Fly around and link up and stuff. Um, but yeah, they were in the middle of a training exercise when this happened. And then, like... Uh, one team is missing and won't respond, and another team. I think uh, they're like uh, they respond, but they're in the middle of a firefight, aren't they? Yeah, like something like one of the teams just disappeared completely, and I think yeah, they they got forced into Zone sixty seven. That was the thing. Yeah, and Katana was like captured, and then just Saber was left. Yep. Um, and they like Ash comes into contact with one of the Sentinels, and it starts like trying to talk to him, and it's like speaking Latin, and then uh, it eventually makes his way to say something in English. That so, was really cool. Yeah, it it was basically just learning his language in two mm -hmm. seconds. Uh, and then it started chasing like Holly, I think, and like had her pinned on a cliff, and then uh, Ash, like when you shoot him. Their shields go up, right? So yeah, jump. they don't keep. Unlike other uh, sentinels, their shields just only pop up when they get shot at. So they're able to conserve power, and basically, their shields don't drain. 
Add right. much at all. So, so Ash, regular weapons fire does jack shit. Ash can't do anything, and he's like, he just picks up a rock and chucks it, and it works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he's able to save her. Um, so he's like, yep. Um, we're going to do keep... explosives only. Um, yeah. Long. And uh, then it cuts to, I think, back at the main Onyx base, and we see Kurt. And uh, yeah, Kurt see and Lucy Kurt and Tom and Mendez, like, uh, Chief Mendez, they're both in like a treehouse with binoculars looking out there trying to watch the recruits. Um, and they're training. I yeah. find this funny because the recruits are wearing armor that is completely invisible, invisible yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, they use these zip lines to get down when yeah, it's, cool. it's the fan, yeah. And they get back to the main base and they link up with Tom and Lucy. And uh, Chief and Tom go to get basically uh, whatever they can from the armory while uh, uh, Kurt and Lucy go to his private armory and he is going to put on his armor because like, he has a full set of Mark VI Milner armor there for him to use. But he doesn't put it on. He begins putting on the spy armor of a Spartan three. And Lucy is just like, "What the heck are you doing?" And he's like, "No, I'm not one of them anymore." You. So that's, that's not a, not the wisest tactical decision, in my opinion. But it's cool, cool, but it's not cool. Like you wanted to see him back in the Spartan armor, whatever. <laughs> yeah, he he's badass enough without it. He. He spoilers might have lived at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but whatever. That's, yeah, I, I can imagine Eric wrote it originally with him with the Milner armor, and he got to that point and went, "Hmm, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I've written myself in whole yeah. time for retcon." <laughs> um, yeah, it just puts on the regular Spartan three armor. Uh, yep. So they they like stock up on grenades and stuff. Um, and a, a, it wasn't Dante. It wasn't Dante on Saber. It was uh, Mark. I think Dante was another, like from another team that they link up with later, like part of the team that was still fighting. Okay. Yeah. Um, but anyway, like they stock up on some grenades in the armory, and they're uh, coming up with a game plan, and then. Um, Dr. Halsey and Kelly show up. They were left over from yeah. the last book. Um, yeah, because in the middle of the last book, Operation First Strike, Halsey went AWOL. She stole this rebel uh, governor's uh, private yacht prowler, basically, alongside Kelly, who she just put into surgery. She put her in an anesthetic and just wheeled her out and uh, uh, went off in search of Onyx because uh, she had found out that that's where something was going down based on Ackerson's data that he had used in uh, a base on Reach, pretty mm -hmm. much. So she was like, I got to find out what's going down over here. Yeah, so they come in, and um, I can't remember if the Covenant were there yet or not. I don't I think, don't think they, they were. were. Um, but they, they do weren't. see a bunch of Sentinels like in orbit when yeah. they get there. And so they have to like get around those and they eventually crash land and like I think Dr. Halsey had to be like like she passed out from the G force alone. Yes, she did. And um she's like, if I don't survive, you know <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> carry on. <laughs> yep. Um sorry, sorry I kind of dropped you in the middle of this situation because yeah. you literally just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> but if you played any of the games, you know she lives. <laughs> yes. So, um but they make it, and they link up with Kurt and all those guys. Yeah, it's cool because uh, Kelly at this time has no idea about the Spartan 3s, and the only invisible enemies she's fought have been Covenant. So right. she mistakes the Spartan 3s for enemies, but she's fighting them, and then she realizes, wait a minute, they're yeah. moving pretty dang fast. <laughs> I, they're not supposed to be this fast. I'm the fastest in the galaxy. Yeah. So, yeah. And she also, like, there's a really... And, like touching moment when she sees Kurt and yep. she just like I thought you were dead. <laughs> yep. We all did. Yeah. News yeah. of my death has been greatly exaggerated. 
Awesome. He doesn't actually say that. Oh, but um, so that's part of Blue Team, and the other part of Blue Team is um, so they Halsey sends out like a send more Spartans message, right? Yep. Um, and uh, what's his name gets it? Uh, uh, Lord right? Hood. Lord yeah. Hood. So he gets that message and he sends uh, the rest of Blue Team, which is like Fred, Linda, and Will. And yep. um, they, they're like, all right, we can't really get there in time, but there's some Covenant ships nearby. We could maybe <laughs> hijack yeah, one of Yeah, because this, the, while this is happening, while she just sent asking for more Spartans, Earth is literally being invaded. Yeah. Uh, Halo 2 is going on right now. Yeah. And, uh, the Earth defense grid is all getting attacked, and the Spartans have been to. They went underwater to take on some Covenant teams in the Caribbean Sea. They've been to the Arctic to take out another one, and then they get this order while they're on their way to secure an orbital elevator in Havana. Yes. So they're going to get up on that orbital elevator and steal a Covenant destroyer. I think it was called the Bloodied Spirit. Yeah, I think so. And oh. this was a brute destroyer. Yeah, it was weird because they were like, why are the Covenant using this elevator? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they, it turns out they were trying to take some uh, Fenris Warheads mm -hmm. nukes um, and I guess use them. Um, and so they, they take the Warheads and they take that ship by like sneaking on and they, they take the Warheads and arm them, right? And they, I think got the warheads in both ships but they like they armed both sets just in case one didn't work out or something yeah and basically they hit they hit the big red button and blew up one of the ships and took the other one yep and they're on their way yeah we also uh went over uh parts about uh a sanghili cuz you said Eric likes to do covenant points of view and we see uh, a officer named Voro, and he kills his uh, shipmaster because the shipmaster was crazy and was going to let the flood, which is a parasitic life form, aboard the ship. Because this is actually the forerunners; they are going to make us gods or something. Yeah, he, and, he uh, was like a zealot. Like yeah. he was like he was willing to sacrifice everyone's lives for like the holy salvation, land, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, Voro kills him and gets the rank of shipmaster, and then proceeds to kick major brute ass in space. Yeah, and that's really cool. We also see uh, the point of view from a prowler captain, Commander Richard Lash, and his prowler is watching the Great Schism go down. He's just like, "Wait a minute, the Covenant shooting at each other." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. <laughs> So that uh, happens, and Blue Team, uh, they steal that ship, and they are the UNSC is also preparing a battle group to send after them as well. Mm -hmm. And that battle group is commanded by my favorite admiral name ever, Carl Buster Patterson. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. Okay. I just like it. It's like Buster's a nickname. It's like in the middle with uh, quotations in the text. Uh, so, Blue Team eventually makes it, and yes. like not far behind them is the Covenant, because they're following them. Yes, yeah, so, uh, Shipmaster yeah. Voro uh, impresses the Imperial Admiral of the Sanghili, the Elites, and he's like, Voro, you're a pretty cool guy. You're also a major threat to me being the leader here. I'm going to promote you to get you out of my hair. So, you're now Fleet Master. Take these ships. And go to Onyx and go kill all the, the humans Holy there. Land. Yeah, go save the Holy Land. <laughs> we must liberate Jerusalem. Deus yeah. vote. Deus vote. Um, so they they get there and like they have to you know fight with the Sentinels a little bit too, um, and like the Covenant stay in orbit for a while I think because they're yeah. they're trying to not die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these Sentinels are pretty hardcore. Yeah, like um, separately that they're not as powerful because they're they're literally this big, like you know, yeah, like three. But they feet. can join. They can join together. 
but like all together, they can take down an entire ship no problem. So they're having a yeah. Big At, when when blue team arrives though, they look up on the UNSC E band, which is like an emergency mm-hmm. radio channel, and they get the Ali Ali oxen free signal, don't mm-hmm. they? I I don't know. No, that that means like all clear or something. Or no, it was it was just like something they used because remember they used it on Reach when they were surrounded by Covenant. I don't know. Yeah, it was uh, something like that. But they were able to like triangulate the position where the signal was coming from, so they could find them on the planet, and um, yeah, so they get there and uh, eventually they link up and. Now we've got all of Blue Team, all of Team Saber, and uh, Kurt, Chief Mendez, and Halsey. And then now we are on Chapter 27, and we get another Covenant po- uh, point of view, which is the Grunt, Coasis. I think it's how you name her. Coasis. He's a nuke. <laughs> yeah, not just any nuke. The big daggum bomb last book, the Admiral Whitecomb wanted to slip into the Covenant supply net, and boy did he succeed. <laughs> this this deliberately, this decision here is what really led to the elites allying with humans, because this planet where this is at, Joyous Exaltation, it's got the huge super carriers from Halo Reach game. They were like 30 kilometers long. They're there. Uh, it's a huge fleet, like absolutely ginormous, and it's a lot of the elites uh, military force at this time so the ungoy watches this bomb get reactivated by hiragok who are just the engineers they're just kind of playing around with it and we get a badass recording that white Com decided to leave on it because he felt like he needed to be melodramatic and also as awesome as he possibly could so he basically uh, tells, gives them a science lecture of what this nuke is, and it is complete BS if you look at the actual science. Like, this is not real at all. Like, I, Nywin took some liberties with this one. <laughs> <laughs> and it, basically he tells them, well, you got a few seconds to pray to your damned heathen gods. You all have a nice day in hell now. And then, boom, it blows up. It detonates in the middle of the fleet. So the fleet is gone. But it also takes a quarter of the planet the fleet was over and half of the moon of said planet. (laughs) And this is is comparable to uh, Admiral Cole using the gas giant in his last stand or Chief uh, and Whitecom leading the Covenant to the station in the last book and blowing it up. Yeah. It was a big boom. <laughs> and it is awesome. One of my favorite parts in all of Halo. It was really cool. Yeah. Um So What were we talking about? Uh, we were the talking about the ball happens. So, uh then there's like a well, we talked about the big council thing. Uh, yeah, and uh, they get the. It goes to the point of view of uh, Voro and his fleet, and uh, uh, they get. Um, well, no, this is during the council. They got. Uh, this is what led them to Onyx in the first place. They uh, intercepted a human transmission, and it basically said suggest Fleet Com, Nova Bomb, the No Halo, and send uh, reinforcements to recover technological assets from Onyx and Spartan. So they intercepted Halsey's message, and that's why they went. Mm-hmm. So they got there. The uh, We're on page uh, 249, so it's around chapter 28 right now with So yeah, Kurt is there, and uh, they have just uh, reunited with Blue Team, and they're basically in uh, investigating all the foreigner stuff on the planet. Mm-hmm. They eventually go to Zone sixty seven, and it's a big crater. And, yep. Um, the they've fo- been digging it up. Yeah, further. they've been excavating, and it it, it it shows like a big underground city. 
yeah, basically Oni kind of dropped the ball when they were trying to excavate this place because they missed quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, th- to be fair, the Sentinels dig way faster. Yeah, true. They should have. I think they could have been able to scan and find some of it. Though. So, like, they they go inside the city, and it's like um, they like Halsey is going through this uh, terminal, and it's got like all these different hieroglyphs flying around, and she's like yep. tapping on them and learning new stuff, and um, she eventually B, finds she's a map of the planet, which reveals that the planet is not uh, natural. It's a construction. This planet is not a natural formation. <laughs> it's a Death Star. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Dyson Sphere, which is some <laughs> really advanced physics. Like you got to be very powerful and able to produce a lot of power, like uh, energy, in order to create something like this. And the foreigners obviously fit the bill. Uh, yeah, Onyx, right. Onyx is what is called a shield world which was where foreigners were supposed to go when the halo rings activated. It was just supposed to protect them from the halo rings firing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they do that. They Apparently, find this so like they call they call Onyx the shield and they call the halos the sword. Yeah. And, and. like the uh the structure they're climbing up is like it's got stairs and like they go through platforms to get up places, but like scale is so large of the the thing that they're climbing up. I'm just picturing it in my head. It, it seems really, really daunting. <laughs> yeah. Um, so but, while they're there, they get attacked by the Covenant. Like the Covenant decides to land in force. And that's when one of the Spartan threes uh, gets hit, and he basically just says, "It's just a scratcher." I'm pretty sure it was uh, Dante who this happens to. It was, yeah. And uh, he's like, "It's just a scratch, sir." But he's like, bones visible, completely torn up, and then he dies. Yep. And that's when that's when Halsey realizes that Kurt has messed with the augmentations a yeah, bit she, too far. She like pulls him aside and is like, "Hey, you're gonna have to tell me more about this." <laughs> yeah. She's like, dude, not cool. <laughs> and so I'm Kurt, like, you're, you're, you're one to talk, Halsey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Kurt tells her all about it. And yeah. she's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed, son. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Oh. So yeah, then uh, Halsey figures out how to teleport around the planet at this point. Yeah. Oh. So they are going the only to. Way they're going to be able to get to the core and like um, get the technology that Kurt is supposed to go after. That's his mission. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the same time, they're trying to look for Team Katana because they were captured early. And they, I don't remember. They somehow sensed them, like picked them up on a sensor that there were bodies and some cryopods some stasis pods down deeper and um so they they go to, to get them and it turns out that like they're there but not there the yeah it's uh, they're like inside these stasis pods that put them in their own pocket dimension yeah <laughs> this is some like w- this is some way high tier technology bullshit it's <laughs> we we don't even understand i don't think nylon even understands yeah he doesn't he doesn't this it's is like, this is this is all theoretical it's like all the ships in Halo, they, they're able to go through slip space by ripping open a, a hole to slip space and go through it, right? Yeah. But these pods, it's like doing that, but constantly yeah. inside of the pod. So, like, you see them there in the pod. But they ain't there. But it's an after image. It's not really them. Yep. It's really crazy. It is. Forerunners were super powerful, and it's hard to believe they got beaten by the flood. So Kurt is like, are you telling me they're alive or not? <laughs> yeah, and but Hulk, they are. Hulk is like, I was just like, I don't know what to tell you, man. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I, listen, uh, I have uh, several degrees. This is not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> but the pods are like, they're made to move. So like, Yeah, they so they move. basically get them. 
and then like, they apparently they block incoming teleportations. So they like yep. use to block the covenant from following them. But then they look around in the room they teleport to the the center of the planet, and it's like it's like a really huge room, but like there's teleportation pads all around, so it's not really doing them any good. Yeah, they're the Covenant are going to show up. They also have to go to the Arctic of this planet and shut down the Sentinel factory up there. Yeah. That's uh, so they go and do that because the UNSC reinforcements have arrived, and it isn't a lot. They it's a uh, battle group Stalingrad, and it's commanded by our, uh, Rear Admiral Patterson, and uh, they have eight ships. The Covenants have around thirty, and. If you've read any of the other books, you know UNSC only wins straight up engagements when they outnumber the enemy three to one, not the other way around. So yeah. the uh, admiral goes in and then retreats back around the moon, and he has prowlers with him, and prowlers are basically stealth ships. And when he does this, he has the prowlers lay a minefield, and they attack again. And when they retreat, they uh, retreat from the moon's orbit. And when the Covenant uh, move on both sides of the planet in order to pincer them and trap them, they are right in the middle of the minefield. Yeah, and when the, mi the minefield detonates, it's all nukes and blows up basically all but a couple Covenant ships. And yeah, that's when takes, Admiral... It takes out all but like four ships. Yeah. And two of them, I think, um, are blasted immediately by some of the fleet. Yep. Pretty much dead. And then there's two ships left. And, and then the, the rest of the Armada shows up. <laughs> yeah, all of the ships that were that survived the Nova bomb blowing up have just arrived. And it is yeah. way, way so the UNSC victory is very much short lived. And I, I was just like, no, Admiral so then, Patterson. So then Buster effing dies. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But the Prowler, the uh, Vash is commanding. Yeah, Lash, he lives and has to watch everyone die. <laughs> yeah. Being a Prowler captain, not all it's cracked up to be. Yeah. <laughs> so back with our intrepid heroes. They have uh, done what they could with the Sentinel Factory and moved back to the core. And uh, they need to defend the core because it's a portal inside of the, it takes them into the Dyson sphere that the planet is basically it transports them to a new dimension pretty much another pocket dimension because the foreigners love this stuff it's forerunner heaven yeah pretty much <laughs> and but they need to defend it long enough so Halsey can close the door behind them or, or else the covenant will just follow them in and they all start getting attacked and uh Fleet Master Voro is himself leading the attack. He brings up plasma mortars, uh, phalanxes of jackals, and it's basically a last stand. And it's kind of like of the, the big battle on Lord of the Rings, where like all yeah. the kingdoms are together and they charge in a big field. It's, it's pretty much. It feels a lot like that. One of one of the uh, other Spartan threes dies. I think it was uh, Holly. Holly dies, and Ash kind of had a thing for her because. Oh, Holly gets freaking vaporized by yeah, her. Like, she does. Like, nothing left. Um, that was sad. And, that was, because uh, she, she and Ash liked each other. There was some romance there, and he and watched then, her die. Yeah, then Will, like, went down and was, like, barehanded fighting some hunters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he pretty much put one of them down, and then uh, he got killed, too. Yeah. And then the door, Halsey's ready so they can start retreating. But Kurt, yeah, he, I'm pretty sure he gets uh, wounded, but he's not going to leave. Like, he's staying, and this is where he's choosing to die. And he still has some nukes left with him. So his whole plan is, I think that Halsey isn't able to get the door shut in time, so he's just going to nuke the whole thing. And um, when they, after they go through... And they do go through and leave him there, and he's laying there bloody. And shipmaster Vor or fleetmaster Voro walks up and is uh, talking to him, and is like, "Are you prepared to die?" And he goes, "Die? Didn't you know? 
Spartans never die. And that's when he triggers the nuke and blows all, everything to kingdom come. Basically, all of Onyx it disappears into slip space, and uh, this huge chain reaction goes on and blows up the Covenant fleet there as well. Basically, leaving uh, Halsey, Kelly, Linda, Fred, the rest of the Spartan Threes, and Chief Mendez safe inside of this pocket dimension. And that was Halsey's entire plan. There wasn't any technology there. Well, there was, but I mean, that wasn't the main point. She only uh, brought the UNSC reinforcements and gathered as many Spartans as she could because she didn't think that humanity could win the war. So she yeah. wanted uh, the Spartans to be able to survive and keep humanity going basically. Yeah. When she heard about the Spartan 3 program, she was like, well, the the Spartan 2s are way too driven and like they're going to die for their cause, but like if I can save these Spartans, I'm going to do it. Yep. Um so that's that's her whole motivation for that. Yeah, because she sees the Spartans as the next step of human evolution. Yeah. So they're just going to live in happy land. And forget all of <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> the, um, they show up in the uh, Karen Travis Kilo 5 trilogy. And that's where we'll see um, what happens to these favorite characters that Eric Nyland wrote so well. I'm sure Karen Travis will do a great job. <laughs> wow. You seem yeah. Kind of bitter. Yeah, I am. You probably will be too. Well, that's the book. We hope yep. you guys enjoyed. Um, leave a like and uh, let us know um, if you've read the book, if you liked it, what your thoughts are. Um, we really appreciate that. And um, we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Thanks for watching. Well, I got to go. It's six minutes yeah. till church starts. See you, bub. See you, dude.